Good afternoon. Polishing brass. That's what I do every day. I go to Geringer. I polish brass. These children, it is my true belief that every child that enters a school is a gift to the teacher who is assigned to teach them. And I do also believe that it is the job of every teacher to unwrap the gift that is in the child so that he or she may be able to find the potential that lies within. And Mr. Dubeck, I believe you have done that. Thank you. I was, a te I was a teaching fellow for the Charlotte Teachers Institute this past summer. And I met this gentleman named Dr. David Strait. And Dr. David Strait spoke to the fellows about a question he had posed to a group of high school students and he didn't feel that he got a good enough answer. He said to us, and he challenged us in the same regard, he said, students at the high school age cannot answer the question about the meaning of life. Now, to be honest, I believe that's a difficult question to answer at any age. Uh, but because he said that high school students would struggle with that question, it gave me the courage to want to ask it of my students. So that was my plan. So I asked my kids, I'm see what they say. I'm gonna work it out. Later that afternoon, the Charlotte, Teachers Insti Charlotte Teaching Fellows Institute offered three grants to teachers who were willing to partner public school, private school, some type of project, anything you wanted to do, just public school, private school teacher partnership. When they said grant, I said, that's mine. <laughs> now I just gotta find somebody to work with. And Ms. Jessica Flaxman, a private school teacher, Charlotte Country Day School, agreed to work with me on an assignment. She's an English teacher too, so you know, we just worked it out. Hey, makes sense. Write letters, why not? We teach grammar every day, so why not write letters? So that is what we did. We chose, she chose her 10th grade students, I chose my ninth graders, of course, and we were going to write letters back and forth, and we're gonna take that grant money, take them out to lunch, you know, where they get to meet one another. Now, I am working in a world that is different from the one I grew up in. And the children that I work with, their mode of communication is everything quick. Email, texting, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything quick, instant messaging. But I wanted to take them back for a moment to that world I grew up in, where we would sit down and write letters. Now, I gave them a little license here to use a computer. You know that writing, sometimes it can be real creative to read. You know, it just gives you a little tough time there. So I was like, no, no, we're going we're gonna to type the letters at least. I'll let you use a computer for that. But everything else, you're not going to write in there, Twitter me at, or Facebook me at, or here's my email. You can write to me. Nope. It's strictly letter writing because I want these children to embrace the art of crafting letters. Embrace it. I do believe that children are, everything's so quick. Kids are losing this thing called empathy. And I believe that through writing a letter, it gives the children time to think, to compose, to reflect, to think about someone else. And I do believe, or actually I know that happened because Miss Brown, she proofread, she, she screened every letter that came in and out of her classroom to make sure that we were not slipping in any of those Twitter me here or Facebook me there, but also to look at the content that the students were writing. Were they really getting the message that writing letters takes you to a different place inside of yourself? These kids don't know each other, and they're both excited about this project. 
I did hear back from Ms. Flaxman, and she did let me know that her students are so eager, and she can't, they can't wait to meet each other for lunch. They want to meet each other now. And then I think about this word empathy that you see here, and I know this is what happened with the students in this letter writing assignment. I know it did. I know communication was built and understanding was made between people that don't know each other, public school kids, private school kids, two totally different worlds they're growing up in. But they all realize the same thing. They're students and they want to have meaningful relationships. And that goes back to what Dr. Strait talked about. He mentioned fostering goodness in the classroom and how do you do that? through writing letters. <laughs> Jacoby, there's three students I want you to meet and he's one of them. Ah, Jacoby. When Jacoby entered my classroom on the first day of school, I did not want Jacoby to enter my classroom <laughs> on the first day of school because Jacoby talked and talked, and talked. Did I say that he talked? <laughs> and it wouldn't stop. It was constant. And sometimes he wasn't even saying much of anything. He didn't do work, no homework, classwork. What? No. I'm gonna take my phone out, I'm going to talk to my friends. I'm going to do everything else but what Ms. Brown wants me to do. Polishing brass, people. Polishing brass. So I said, OK. We worked it out. Jacoby realized at the end of his first quarter in high school, he made some bad choices. And he told me one day, and I'm telling you, I could have fell to the floor. Jacoby said to me, Miss Brown, is there any way I can talk to the students at my middle school? Because I want to let them know what to expect once they get to high school. Because Miss Brown, if somebody did that for me, I would have never walked through the doors of Garinger High School the way that I did. Okay. So this letter writing assignment, he found himself. He found his writer's voice, he found his maturity, he found his leadership ability. It's just a beautiful thing to see this gem of a boy come into his own self. He wrote at the end of his first letter to his pen pal, if there is anything that you need, if there is anything that I can do to help you achieve your goals, please let me know. That's what he wrote. At the end of his second letter to his pen pal, we dealt with that question, what is the purpose of life? Because I had to get to that, right? So at the end of that letter, he wrote, life is a blank canvas. You are the painter. Feel free to paint a picture any way you choose or change it all together for that matter. What? <laughs> Polishing brass, people. Polishing brass. It's the real world assignments that trigger and that allow these kids to come alive in ways that just regular everyday classroom assignments will not. Raphael, that's my boy. He is an auditory learner 100%. If you say it, he gets it. If he hears it, he understands it. He can feed it right back to you. But if he writes it, well, that's something else. So Raphael, when he got his pen pal's name and the assignment, he walked around with that piece of paper for a week. And he came up to me and he said, Ms. Brown, can I stay after school? I need some help with you. Um, help me write that letter. So OK. Get to the computer. And he said, now, you know, I know what I want to say, but I want it to be smooth. Because he was writing this girl named Madison. So it's okay, Raphael, let's do this. She's sitting there, writing it out, and he said, well, see, he's watching me now write, type the letter in, and he started making corrections to what I'm typing. I'm like, wait a minute. 
So that's a beautiful thing. He's now realized through this assignment that he can do it himself. Because as we're typing this, I'm telling him, Raphael, your gift is in your ears and your gift is in your voice. Please, sir, when you write, make sure you whisper as you read, as you write. Say what you got to say, but you're whispering it out. So you're going to whisper the words and write. Whisper the words and write. Whisper, write, whisper, write. The second time we get to the computer lab, Raphael's fine. He doesn't need my help because he's whispering, writing, whispering, and writing. This is my unlit firecracker, Jordan. She has so much potential in her, and she doesn't even realize it. I see it. I just wish she could. Throughout the school year, Jordan was uh, kind of wishy-washy with the assignment. She'd do it, and then she wouldn't, and then she'd stop. It's like, I don't know, I guess I can do this, but I don't know. Okay. The assignment. Get the, let, get the names out to the kids. She picks two people because we had more students. Um, we had less students in the class than kids. We had more kids coming to us from Charlotte Country Day. She said, Ms. Ron, I'll take two kids. I was like, what? I was like, you barely do your work. They're not going to get the letters. <laughs> she sat there in 20 minutes, typed two of those jokers out. She was done. Went back, went through proofreading with her, all set. She's like, see? I was like, oh my goodness, Jordan, you did it. Look what you can do, girl. Yes, I did it, Ms. Brown. And I used my first letter as my model. You know, I didn't want to say the same things to Paul that I was saying to Jordan, so I wanted to change my words around and stuff, but I needed to see it as a model. So Jordan has taught me this unlit firecracker, has taught me what sets her going, what pops her off. She has to have a model in front of her, and she can run with it. We're all a little wiser from this, me included. I learned something about patience. Now, I know about sending letters through the mail. I get that. But man, when you're waiting for a reply, these kids after the, the weekend, they asking me, did the letters come back? And I'm like, <laughs> but after two weeks, three weeks, I'm not hearing anything. And I'm starting to say, wait a minute, these kids don't want to talk to us. What's wrong with, what's wrong with our class? What happened? It wasn't that. We heard back from them. It wasn't a month, but we heard back from them. And they're just as excited, just as eager just as happy to meet some new kids and to have a real, meaningful, genuine relationship. And this right here is my favorite quote of all times. And truly, I believe this is the mantra for Ms. Brown teaching English anywhere high school USA. I do believe that I cannot teach them all of the intelligence they will need, and I cannot give them all of the character that they will have to have. I can only teach a piece, give a piece through a writing assignment, polish the brass to silver. 